Mom, say hi to the people. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to, to find the funny when Lisa Alvarado. Yes, that was a good <laughs> okay. one. That was a good one. Tell them why they should listen to the podcast. Uh, you have to love it. She's a good girl, a good, very funny, uh, very ugly too. <laughs> <laughs> She called me ugly four times now. This is take number five. Okay. Okay. No, I like it. Hey, everybody. It's Lisa Alvarado. Welcome to Find the Funny. Thanks for spending some time with me. Maybe you're listening to me in the shower right now. That's a good idea. <laughs> Please, no friction right now as you're listening. <laughs> Another episode. Can you believe I'm still doing this? It's like, I don't know. I think we're five, six episodes in and you're still tuning in. Or maybe this is a mistake. Either way, I'm grateful. It's actually seven episodes in. Are we? Yeah. Wow. Guess what? Today's episode is really special because I don't have any guests because I don't have money. <laughs> I mean, I've been on the road so much that when I get home, it is so difficult to find the time to schedule a guest and plan the whole episode. So it's going to be me and my producer, Sarah Lasvisa. She's fantastic. She's a great editor. She's my ride or die. She's been with me since... What, 15? Yeah, 15 years. years. Yeah. Um, she's come on the road with me, I don't know, countless times. And she actually edited, helped me put together my first comedy special, which yeah. was shot in Chicago. Yeah. She's where I'm from. Yep. She's a cheesehead. Right? <laughs> exactly. No, so she's from Wisconsin. I'm a Bears, but not really. Yeah, I really don't care. We just go at it just to go at it. <laughs> yeah. I wear my bear shirt just. Just to uh, make her upset. Okay, <laughs> let's get into it. So, Lisa, I think it would be super fun for your fans to hear just about your process as a stand-up comedian, like what you do when you're traveling, and just, you know, some of the stories that you might have. There's so many stories. Yeah. In fact, I think you've been present for a lot of them. I believe I have. <laughs> Yeah, she, she's been going on the road with me for, gosh, 10 or 15, 15 years, I think. Yeah. On and off. You don't go to every gig, but you go to the fun ones. And I do. Whenever. Like, like you went to the one uh, where we got to hike a glacier in Alaska. Oh, yes. That was that was pretty much pretty fun. And then sometimes it's too. so great. You get to do such really fantastic things and see places you you would never normally visit when you're on the road that's one of the blessings of this job like military tours to going to different countries where they fly you out going to dubai to do comedy to you get a plane <laughs> and they fly you 17 hours to tell dick jokes on the other side of the world i mean what other job i actually have a question about your worst heckle oh my worst heckler amazingly i got my first heckle only two or three months into comedy. Really? I started stand-up by taking a comedy class, um, a stand-up comedy class at Zany's. And the Zany's that I took it at actually closed already. It's a Zany's in Vernon Hills. And um, I only did it because I was chickening out. So I took the class <laughs> and at the end of the class, you have to do five minutes on stage. And that's always easy and you think you're killing but you're not, it's just that all your friends and family are there nervous for you and excited for you. So they're gonna clap and laugh at everything. They're not a normal audience. So after that, you know, I did a ton of open mics and things like that in Chicago. Then I had my first real show where I was hired to host at Zany's at the same club that I graduated at. I was so excited. I had maybe 10, 12, 15 minutes if I'm lucky if I talk slow. And obviously, because I was only three months in, I wasn't very good. I just had these cutesy little jokes. So when you get up as the host, you're the first person that they see. And the host actually needs to be really good. If the club knows what they're doing, they put a host up there with experience because they've got to handle hecklers. They got to handle people taking drink orders while they're speaking. They got to memorize the rules of the club. They have to memorize the intros to the comics. So they have a lot on their hands. So here's little old me, my first paid gig hosting. <laughs> I got up there 
I did my, you know, lame jokes for the first five minutes. And then into my set, this guy that was sitting off to my left, older gentleman, he's probably 55 years old, starts heckling me, not just the saying stuff. It would have been easy if he was like, you're not funny, but he went for the degrading route and he's like, shoo is your tits. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a 55 year old gray haired man. Right. And I was like, so the first thing I did was immediately I I did some sort of lame Viagra joke, which (laughs) I I mean, it got some laughs, but then he kept going. He's like, show us your tits. Wow. And I was like, dude, shut up, you know? And then here I'm so nervous and I don't know, I'm I'm new, so I don't know how to handle a heckler, Mm. especially one that does that to a woman that it's, it's fucking degrading to do that. Right. So he kept saying it. And so instead of addressing him, I just tried to ignore him and rifle through my set. And I was so humiliated. I think I got off after 10 minutes and I was supposed to do close to 15. I got off the stage and I was bawling. I was crying. I brought the feature up and he's doing 25 minutes or so before the headliner. I was bawling and my comedy coach was there, the guy that trained me at Zany's and he goes, I'm glad that this happened to you so soon. And I was like, what? Why would anybody wish this upon somebody else? That was painful. I hate this industry. That's what it's like. I'm quitting. And he goes, no, because now you'll either learn from this and get better or you'll quit because comedy is hard and it's really painful Uh and it's a growing process. So if you're going to quit, then you you're not cut out for it because it gets much worse than this. (laughs) And so what I did is that night, I went home and I wrote maybe two or three pages of responses for the future, if that ever happens again, or if anybody heckles me, how do I handle it? Wow. So so it it made me better. Yeah. Actually, it made me stronger. And (laughs) here's the other thing that I can't believe I'm admitting, I don't, date stand-up comics at least i try not to because <laughs> we're all fucked up and, uh, <laughs> and then y- you don't want to shit where you eat you know uh, i think a stand-up comic it's like when you break up you have to see them like we all kind of run in the same circles work work in the same clubs and you're going to run into them or their friends again mm-hmm. so i didn't know that and like i said i was like three months into comedy and I was crying in the back room and the headliner walked in and he's like, what's wrong? What happened? Do you, are you okay? And I was like, uh, that guy over there uh, that was heckling me. And he said, he said, show me your tips. I'm like, <laughs> bawling no. like an idiot. And this guy, um, the headliner, he was super funny and he had been doing it for a long time. All he said was point him out. So that's what I did. Uh, I pointed right to him in my tears. I'm like, he's right there. And this guy destroyed that heckler for the first 10 minutes of his set. Oh, wow. it was just about that guy. Sweet. Of, I mean, anything from his haircut to what kind of man says that to a woman to obviously you've never seen tits if Brad <laughs> got an MC to show her. Right. Like it just, he, destroyed him at his his just annihilated the guy it was fantastic and of course i fell in love <laughs> not because he was so attractive but because i was like oh he saved me uh, you know and every woman is like that that cinderella yeah. complex of save me oh my god he's my protector yeah. you know what i mean and of course it was a shit relationship <laughs> and it was great when he wasn't high but um yeah. that was like maybe four minutes out of the six months that we dated um uh, <laughs> fantastic guy fantastic comic just not someone i would want to date again <laughs> <laughs> so uh don't ask me who it is i'm not going to tell you he's married with kids now i think he still does comedy um, he's on my Facebook page. So if you want to scroll through my 6,000, 7,000 people, <laughs> try to figure out which comic it is. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can figure it out, I'll, I'll say yes, it's that person. That's interesting. It probably is like different kind of heckles for women as opposed to men, right? 
It's wild. I, I don't think. In fact, I'm, I have never heard of a female audience member heckling a man going, Hey, show us your balls. Yeah. That never happens. They might say you're not funny or that they might say something else, but no one's ever like, whip out your balls, dude. <laughs> Let me see that hairy nutsack. That <laughs> Let me see them jiggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, juggle them. Let's go. <laughs> that never happens. That kind of crap always happens to the female comics. It's always like a physical sort of thing. Yeah. And the men never get that. Yeah. Yeah. At least not that I've ever seen. Because women will just... Unfortunately, I think the women hecklers are normally... The majority, it's unfortunate that the hecklers are, I would say, 60% women, 40% men. Really? Yeah. Even if, if the guys are drunk, sometimes they just mumble through stuff. Right. But it's usually a bachelorette party that's like, oh, they're just drunk yeah. and stupid. Or a lot of women like to just talk through your set. Like yeah. They just start talking, but they talk really loud. Like, yeah. can I have another Chardonnay? Oh, my so-and-so didn't call me today. And oh, just right. make it this conversation at the table, which they're not heckling me directly. But that is a heckle because you're making an interruption. You're interrupting the show. Yeah. During the show. Yeah. And then other people get involved. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh, we should tell the story. I told you about that heckler that I had in the theater show. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this oh, is, yeah. this is one of my favorites, okay? So I'm doing this. It's like a 900-seat theater. It's packed with people. And I'm doing a rated R show. And this guy in the front row is sitting next to his girlfriend and one of his friends. And he's talking through my whole set. The problem with addressing somebody right off the top of a set is the people in the back of the room, because it's a huge theater... They don't know that he's heckling. They don't hear it way back there. So I have to make the decision. Do I want to address this and start off almost in the hole? Because sometimes it goes bad and they get pissy and they make it worse. Um, so I went a few bits into my set and he just kept mumbling shit. Like it just, it was incoherent. He was really drunk. And finally, I walked over to him after I was so frustrated, and I said, you know what? I let it slide three times. Now shut the fuck up. <laughs> it was, here's the thing. I was really nice, because I heard him like three times already, but now fuck off. Okay? Shut your mouth. I am Latina. I will come over there and fucking cut you. Do you understand? No extra charge. And the whole audience that was especially around him started applauding because, yeah. like, thank God you're shutting this guy up. He's so annoying. Right? He keeps going through my whole set here and there. And then by the end of my set, I'm setting up my closer. So you want your closer to kill. So you can't be interrupted. Or you can be, but it really sucks. Yeah. If you're, if you're going through the setup and someone interrupts you, it's a big deal because the punchline will not sound the same. So before I did my actual close, I said, you guys, uh, you know, I've been up here 35 minutes. I'm kind of going over my time, so I got to get out of here. He starts yelling, 30, 35, 40 minutes, dude. What's up, sweetheart? Yeah, 40 minutes, dude. I'm like, what is this bingo? What? Are you, <laughs> what? what yeah. Shut up. Yeah. And then I finally got so annoyed that I pointed to another younger guy, audience member, and I go, "Can you just put your dick in his mouth <laughs> to shut him the hell up?" <laughs> the whole crowd erupts in laughter. <laughs> Everybody's applauding because at this point, everybody hates this guy. Yeah. But here's what I didn't expect. This has never happened to me in 22 years of comedy. He actually stood up, walked across the room, what? and this guy was six foot six, at least. Huge, <laughs> like football player, starts unbuckling his pants. <laughs> the drunk guy got so scared. Like, you could see his face got beat red. And he's oh like, holy shit, this guy's really going to stick his dick in my mouth. <laughs> 
does somebody, sir, will you put your dick in his mouth for me, please? <laughs> Just. actual uh, <laughs> clip of this. It'll be up on my YouTube channel, Lisa Alvarado Comedian. It was unreal. Yeah. I have never seen that before. It was like a night at the Apollo. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it was like the very first time I got heckled. It yes. was this guy coming to my defense. And um, I ended up doing an interview with this guy after because all these audience members kept coming up to me saying that he was a plant, right? Like that guy that got up. Really? You guys worked this out beforehand, right? And I go, no, I've wow. never met that dude ever. And he got up and did that solely on his own. Uh, look who I ran into. This is Jeff, everybody. And I just want you to see size wise. Okay, I'm way over here on camera. Look how big he is. <laughs> can you see? Can you see how tall this is? Okay, this is scale. Six, eight, this is scale. 289. I don't even come up. This is, this is Jeff. I just wanted to interview, interview Jeff because uh, I've had, I don't know if you know this, I've had a million people coming up to me after the show saying, was that guy a plant in Absolutely the audience? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The guy's been trouble the entire cruise. He gave her trouble. She roasted his ass and I got to be a part of it, which I loved. <laughs> But I mean, imagine the balls of that. Yeah. Some guy. Yeah. You say something. We say things to audience members all the time. They don't do it. Right. But he actually gets up, walks across, starts with one of his hands. I'm like, oh, he's my hero. <laughs> so that, that was memorable. That was one of my favorite heckles ever. You had a lot of people come up to you after the shows, huh? Yeah. And... What was maybe your best compliment after a show that you ever had? That's a good question because we do get a lot of shitty things. Um, I thought I would go positive. Yeah, that's Sarah. <laughs> she's the one positive because she's not damaged like me. I, I think my my favorite compliments are always the ones where they tell you about a hard thing that they're going through in life and how you brought them out of it or uh -huh. if you. This is the first time I've laughed since my brother died. This is the first time y you made me so happy and I've been going through this. And, or I've had a couple people say, you just inspired me to start stand-up comedy. What you did up there. Wow. Um, I've always wanted to try it and I was too nervous, but when, when I watched you do, inspired me to wow. start this. And I'm like, you do not want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it is if I inspired you, hopefully it's to not do it. <laughs> this shit takes forever to get good at. It yeah. is the hardest job ever, I think. I mean, people have misconceptions about stand-up comedy, like almost like rock stars, you know, like that. Oh my gosh, you get to go on the road and see all this stuff and and see the world and you're telling jokes, but living in different hotel rooms, being half the week is in airports, mm -hmm. delayed flights, missing gigs, um, shitty bookers, you know, people that are mean to you at the club just because they want to get ahead. Um, you know, the bar staff that doesn't want to sleep with you, that's the worst. Mm. Uh, as a joke. <laughs> She'd laugh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She doesn't get it. Sometimes you guys. At least see how good she laughed when I told her to. <laughs> Who pays a rent? I do, bitch. <laughs> um, man, there's just so many things that are hard. So when people come up to you and give you a compliment that's not just, hey, you were funny. Although we love that because we definitely, our goal is to make you laugh. When you can um, take someone out of their pain which is why I do this podcast, Find the Funny. It is the best gift, Yeah, I think, that people can give to each other. And when I get a compliment like that, it also helps heal my pain of other things that mean people have said. I have so many trolls and mean people on the internet. Um, it's crazy. It's like 
what what do you get out of that? I, I really I don't know. I don't get it either. Understand like you actually took the time to watch my podcast and then argue with me about it or tell me how I'm wrong or what wasn't right. Yeah. And here's the thing about a podcast. It's it's just me talking. Right. There's no rocket science here. There's no it's just you either like the person and their personality or not. And guess right. what? There's a million other podcasts right. and comedians. Just because you don't like my particular style, it doesn't mean that someone else doesn't. Just scroll. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. It's it's. Imagine if that happened during online dating. Uh -huh. Right? You're like you're like scrolling through, but it's like taking the time to tell that person why you swiped past them. Well, you got big ears, or you look like you're smile. Uh, you got crooked right. teeth. <laughs> Just swipe yeah. past. Yeah. Swipe past my comedy or swipe past my podcast if you don't like it. I'm actually okay with it, but to stop and tell me literally what you hated about it or didn't agree with is insanity to me right not that you don't want it to improve or be better or whatever but these are just like you're talking about like these trolling people who just want to hate yeah yeah they're everywhere now and it's it's really sad so i do try to focus on the times where people had said that i really affected their life in a positive way yeah it's not just the jokes i have a bit that i do about mammograms because of my own experience of finding a lump and the fear that goes along with that right and a woman came up to me after the show and she had um one breast and the other one had a mastectomy and she uh. didn't want to get it redone she's like i'm just i'm sick of it i don't even want the other one and uh. i'm just now I feel awkward because if I wear a dress or if I wear a certain shirt, you can see that I have one and I don't have another. And she's like, for the first time after you explaining this to the audience, I feel like I can walk out of this theater with my head held high because now they understand more what we go through and what this means right. to not have a breast is like not being a woman. So it was... I mean, she brought me to tears when she told me how she felt like she could hold her head up high because of the jokes that I told and the information that I gave the audience. There's yeah. nothing better than that. Yeah. So you you really connect with your audience a lot. Like I noticed that's what uh, something that you do in your comedy. How do you go about that process? I really love to improvise. Yeah. And I'm a purist with comedy, so I like the writing. I think joke writing is so important. And um, if a comedian can do both, I think that they're unstoppable. Those are my favorite comics. The right. ones that can handle heckler, that can go off on a riff, but then get back into their material or somehow streamline their material into the heckling situation or whatever, but do it in a very creative, different way. Th that type of comedy is my favorite. And that's what I aspire to. I don't always get that out of every show, but I try. And one of the other things that I, I do as a comedian is I like the lights up a little bit in the audience. Right. And that's so I can see their faces, so I can see their expressions, and I always make eye contact. There's a lot of comics that like it black. You know, you when there's a really strong spotlight, you cannot see the audience. It's all black out there. And that creates a certain barrier, almost like, it's almost like you're talking to a room of nobody. You're just hearing them. I'm the opposite. I need to see your face. I have to see, are you questioning what I just said? Are you with what I just said? Is it affecting you or is it make you angry? And their faces tell you everything, their eyes, their, their body positioning. And then you talk about that. And that's how I write tags to the jokes. I usually have what I'm going to say on a set list and I bring that up, but it might just say driving or it might just say car accident or it might just say my son. And then I know kind of what the jokes are 
Then from there, I kind of riff with the audience, depending on what they say, if they laugh more about one thing, then I'll change the order. Um, but I write a lot of tense on stage yeah, and act outs because I'm going off of their response. So I have one more question for you, Lisa. Um, what are some of the common misconceptions that people have about comedians? I think one of the common misconceptions that people have about comics is that we're these life of the party extrovert yeah and i'm actually the complete opposite i'm uh, an introvert i love <laughs> being by myself i love being with small groups of people like two to three people and having like a deep conversation i have never gone to coachella i've never gone to burning man i think it would be the end of me <laughs> <laughs> because uh as a stand-up comic we speak to the audience and they're kind of a little bit of a distance from us and then collectively they're almost like one team they speak back through their laughter through their body language heckling is even a form of communication when i leave the stage i leave that relationship but to me that's almost almost the audience collectively is just one person or one entity so when I have to do a meet and greet after a show, okay. I have a certain emotional capacity and Sarah knows this about me. <laughs> when my eyes start to gloss over, and she knows, okay, shut shut everything down. <laughs> you have Lisa out because you have 30 people asking for a picture with you, but they also want to tell you a story or connect with you somehow because they just spent an hour with you. Right. And you've told some intimate things about your life. So they think that they know you. Right. And it's not that they don't have a little bit of insight into your life and who you are, but we're not friends yet. <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of times they're very sweet and very kind, very supportive. And I and I want to shake hands and I love meeting people after shows. It's just if I do that for too long, I get my nerves kind of get a little like I get um, overwhelmed. I think that's the right word for it. It's yeah. well, you want to be polite. So sometimes people will be like, hey, you know that joke that you told? You know, here's where you can go with that. Oh, wow. <laughs> it does tell comics what to do. Like, we, this is all we do. This is what we do for a living. Trust me. We know that. Thank you. But no. <laughs> Let me do my job and you do yours. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go up to a doctor and be like, you know what? If you just pressed a little harder with that scalpel, I think that you could do a tummy tuck and remove their liver. But I, don't, <laughs> I, I appreciate, I know where it's coming from. I think a lot of people have great intentions. It's just really hard when they tell you a joke. Sometimes they'll do that. They'll come up to you just so they can tell you a joke. And it's almost always a stock joke. <laughs> and they walk away like they kind of drop the mic. And I'm like... I'm not going to use your joke on stage because right. I like it. someone else wrote it. Right. Thank you. But this is an interesting story that just happened. And I cannot believe this is the, one of the weirdest things that has ever happened to me on stage. I'm doing comedy 22 years going on 23. So I'm on a ship doing uh, comedy shows. And on some of these ships, you have to do PG shows which are family shows so there's children of all ages in the show as well as adults a lot of people come with their families on cruises especially during spring break and i'm doing these clean jokes and i'm probably 20 minutes into my set and i start to smell something really gross oh no and i was like oh somebody has gas no big deal and I'm doing a couple more jokes and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is bad. It's the kind of smell where you can taste it. It was Ooh. so strong on the room that I was like, oh, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one smelling this because I'm on stage and it's reeks. It's wow. so bad. So then I'm like, oh, maybe a kid dumped in their diaper or something like that. Huh. But it wasn't that. I'm a mom and I know what that smells like. This was... What DefCon Five? Oh, this oh, we're going to war. Oh my god! Smell like so. Basically, someone had a major accident, and I believe it was probably someone older. 
that <laughs> had the tacos on the ship. I don't know <laughs> oh, no. what happened. It was one of these you ate fat sushi situations. Oh, wow. So I, I had to address it because when something is so obvious in the audience and the comic doesn't address it, that is the number one indication that they are a new comedian and they don't know how to handle it. Right. I'm old and jaded, so I'm going <laughs> like to handle it. I'm going to say something. So I just said, is it me or does anybody else smell something in the room? And then half the audience was like, yeah, gross. People were literally putting scarves over their face. Oh my God. People started walking out. Oh, so no. then what I realized is I just called someone out and I didn't, I don't want to embarrass or humiliate anybody ever. So I put it back on me and I go, oh, sorry guys, that was me. You know, <laughs> I, I uh, ate way too many ice cream cones and I'm lactose intolerant. Do you still vibe around us? What's going on? So I brought it back on me to take the light away from whoever obviously shit their pants. Right. So I get off stage like two minutes early because I see people literally leaving the room and it's very uncomfortable. So everybody exits. So whoever had the accident exited in this mass flow of people. Oh, wow. So we check the chairs because I it's reeks in the comedy club. And on one of the chairs was two stains. Like, so maybe they went once and then they're like, oh, I got to move. And they went again. Oh, no. On the chair. And it was so bad that it seeped onto the floor, to the carpet. Oh, so the comedy and I had a show in there later. The comedy club reeked. We oh, wow. had to have um, the cleaning crew, the cleaning staff come in. They threw up the chair. <laughs> oh, I mean, I hope they threw it overboard because yeah, Jack is not going to like that. It's going to smell down there. <laughs> oh, uh, Titanic fans. <laughs> so it just, it. I felt so bad for that person, but I was nauseous after that. I had to leave the room and they fumigated the carpet and cleaned and they sprayed disinfectant, the same stuff I think they use for COVID. Yeah. And uh, it just was. So basically what I'm trying to say is, I'm so funny, you will shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> One of my shows. <laughs> if I don't get a joke out of what happened to me, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, not even worth it. <laughs> um, so that's me. You guys, please call in. If you have any questions, for me, it could be personal questions. I might not answer it, but I'll try. It's so super easy. All you have to do is go to the findthefunnypodcast.com website. And there's a little button that you just push. And you can ask Lisa a question. And we want to hear from you. You're just recording an audio thing and we'll play it here. Right. And um, it, Or any of my guests. If you see one of my guests on um, and you want me to have them back and you love that person and their personality let me know in the comments and don't be mean okay don't be a dick if you're gonna be a dick <laughs> just write it on trump's profile there you go um, <laughs> yeah because he likes that stuff <laughs> more attention the better all right thank you so much you guys for tuning in and definitely uh subscribe yeah on youtube right YouTube, yeah, Apple Podcasts, whatever you listen to, Spotify, the Tickety Talk, all the good stuff. Lisa Alvarado, comedian. That's the stuff I'm supposed to say. But mostly, I'm just really grateful that you're spending some time with me. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks so much, and we will see you next time. Um, tell a friend. Yeah. All right, guys. Till next time. Wow. Love you. Thank you. I hope everybody listen to my daughter and see it and. Laughing on her because she is very funny. <laughs> awesome. That was great. That was perfect, Mom. Perfect. That was so good.